All right, this first bone we're going to look at is the sternum. It's this whole section right here. There's three portions to the sternum. You have the manubrium right here, which is this upper portion. You can see these first two ribs connecting there. The next part, which kind of makes a tie, is the uh, body. And finally, you have this little xiphoid process on the bottom here, which is just this little itty bitty piece right there. And the way you remember that is when you're doing CPR, a lot of times people worry about breaking out that xiphoid process because they're pressing so hard. So that's just a one way to remember that the xiphoid process is that little process on the end. All right, we're going to take a look at your clavicle here. There's only a few things you're going to need to know about your clavicle for this class. Uh, what you're going to be able to need to do is be able to define which side is medial and which side is lateral. The way you're going to do that is just by looking at the bone here. You can tell that on this side it thins out and it's a lot flatter than the rest of the bone. So just remember lateral, flateral. And so you're going to know this side is going to be lateral. Then they'll let you know that this side is medial. Common extra credit question can be uh, which clavicle is this, the left or the right? The way that you need to do that is first by defining the lateral end and the medial end. So then you know it can sit one of two ways. It could sit either like this or like this. And the way you're going to decipher which one it is is by checking out the surface. If you feel this surface, it's rough and it's got a lot of protrusions. On this side, it's smooth. Uh, if you feel your own clavicle, you can feel that on the superior side, the side that you're touching, uh, it's very smooth. So, because of that, you're going to know that this smooth side sits superior. Therefore, this is going to be the left clavicle, your medial and lateral ends. Alright, here we're going to have your scapula. Uh, you're going to know that this is going to be your left scapula, because this right here is going to be where the head of the humerus is going to interact with that scapula. Also, uh, just for your information, the scapula is going to sit a little, little bit of an angle like that in the body. It's not going to sit straight up and down. It sits kind of at an angle. So the first uh, term we need to check out is the glenoid cavity. It's going to be that little dip right in there where the head of the humerus is going to articulate with that scapula. Next term is going to be the glenoid process, and that's going to be that whole space that kind of surround, protrudes and surrounds that glenoid cavity. Next term is going to be the scapular spine. That's going to be this whole structure going up here. Next term is going to be the supraspinous fossa. And that's going to be the space sitting right above that uh, scapular spine. Next term is going to be the subscapular fossa. And that's going to be the whole space sitting underneath of that scapula. So right under there, sub being under. Next term is going to be the infraspinous fossa. And that's going to be sitting beneath that scapular spine on the uh, posterior side. Next term is going to be the coracoid process that's going to sit on the front or the anterior side of that uh, scapula. Uh, next term is going to be the chromium process. It's going to be this big guy in the back here. And finally your borders. Uh, for the borders you're going to have the medial border, the lateral border, and the superior border. Here we're going to take a look at your humerus. We're going to know this is going to be your right humerus because you can see this lesser tubercle and this coronoid fossa, they face almost directly anteriorly. And so we'll go over those again in a little bit here. So starting with the structures, up here we're going to have your head and then we're going to have your surgical neck is going to sit right here or right here. Uh, the reason they call that the surgical neck is because if a surgeon has to amputate uh, that arm off, they're going to, that's where they're going to cut. Uh, next we're going to have your greater and lesser tubercles. So again, your greater tubercle and your lesser tubercle. Next, uh, going between those, we're going to have the intertubicular groove. So just remember that, that's a groove going right in between those two tubercles. Uh, then we're going to have your deltoid tuberosity. It's going to be this rough, roughened elevation right here on the lateral side of that humerus. It's going to be where the deltoid is going to insert. Next we're going to have your medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle. A condyle is a rounded uh, pro uh, structure for articulation with another bone. So uh, epicondyle means it's going to sit above those condyles. So medial epicondyle and lateral epicondyle. Then we're going to have your uh, capit capitulum right here. Your capitulum, is, just remember it's bigger and so it's like a capital capitulum. Then right here we have your trochlea, right there. Uh, trochlea, the 
uh, prefix means pulley, so just think of it kind of sitting like a pulley right in there. It's going to be your trochlea. Then we have your coronoid fossa. It's going to sit right there. And it's going to be a little indent in there. That's what a fossa is. So coronoid fossa is on the anterior side. And on the back, we're going to have the olecranon fossa. And anytime you hear olecranon, think elbow. All right, here we're going to have your uh, radius and your ulna, radius ulna. So uh, we'll start off by defining the structures, and then I'll tell you how to figure out which, whether they are left or right. So when you're looking at the ulna, the head actually sits at the bottom here. So it sits distally. So the head on the ulna is distal. Uh, then you're going to have the olecranon process is going to be this structure right here. It's going to fit right into that olecranon fossa on the humerus. Then you're going to have the coronoid process. It's going to be this structure right here. It's going to fit right into that coronoid fossa of the humerus. Then we're going to have the trochlear notch. It's going to be right here. That trochlea of the humerus is going to fit right in there. Then we're going to have the radial notch. The radial notch is this little smooth part right here on the lateral side of the ulna. You know it's, going to, it's called the radial notch because the head of the radius, which is right here, is going to fit right in there. So it's going to be your radial notch. Then we're going to have the styloid process, and the styloid process is going to be this little part right here sticking out on the bottom of the ulna. So uh, when you're trying to figure out whether this is the right or the left ulna, one thing to remember is PU, pinky ulna, so the ulna always articulates with the pinky. So then what you're going to try to figure out is uh, proximal and distal. So you know that the head is going to be distal, and this part here is going to be proximal. So then you have to figure out uh, well, then you're going to know that the radial notch right there sits laterally and the styloid process sits medially. So this is going to be your right ulna because PU pinky ulna goes with that ulna there. So moving on to your radius, this is also going to be your right radius. We're going to take a look at the structures here. We're going to have the head up here. It's going to be proximal in this case, and then you have the neck sitting right underneath that head. Then we're going to have this roughened elevation right here. It's going to be the radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity is going to sit medial. That's going to be important to know for identifying whether the radius is right or left. Okay. Then you're going to have the styloid process, which is similar to the styloid process on the ulna. It sits right there, and you can think of that as kind of holding the thumb in place. So it's going to sit something like that, and you can see that that starlight process kind of holds the thumb in place, or at least think of it that way. And finally, the last structure on that radius is going to be right here. It's going to be the ulnar notch. So the ulnar notch is actually on the radius. So it's the ulnar notch of the radius. And that's going to be where that head of the ulna is going to fit in there. And the way you're going to figure out whether this is the right or a left radius, we already know it's the right. But just know that this radial tuberosity sits medially and this styloid process sits laterally so then you'll know that this is going to be your right radius all right we're going to take a look at your hand here uh, this one's kind of hard to show so you're really going to have to check out in the lab to uh, kind of see all the intricacies of the hand here but uh, there's a nice mnemonic that's going to help you remember all the bones of the hand it's some lovers try positions that they can't handle and that'll help you but you're going to need to get a look at them because they can flip the hand upside down and all over the place so sometimes the mnemonic doesn't work you're just going to need to look at the shapes of the bones so starting off here um, underneath that thumb we have the scaphoid and the prefix scaph means boat so if you can imagine that sitting like a boat um, right there so that's scaphoid next to the scaphoid uh, we have the lunate right there and then we have the, next to that lunate, we have the trichetrium, tr trichetrium, right there, and the pisiform, right there on the end, so that little guy sticking off on the end there. So remember, some lovers try positions, scaphoid, lunate, trichetrium, and pisiform. Next, up here, we have the trapezium, uh, sitting there right underneath the thumb. Then we have the trapezoid, uh, just remember it looks, it's really square, so just remember that. And then we have the capitate right there. That's the biggest bone. So again, think of it like the capital. And then we have the hamoid right there, sitting underneath that pinky. 
Then um, going up into the metatarsals, we have metatarsal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So remember the thumb is 1, and then you just go over from there. So metatarsal 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then for your phalanges, uh, we're going to have the proximal, the middle, and the distal uh, for, all the, for all of your fingers. But then for the thumb, you're just going to have a proximal and a distal phalange. So proximal phalange, distal phalange, and then proximal phalange, middle phalange, distal phalange.